the sound you make when you ride a motorcycle. Ah! Ah! everyone it's your boy Bly here with Don Cross Racing coming to you on a glorious Saturday in the Texas Hill Country I'm on the way to a uh, group ride and I was talking to an individual the other day and I was trying to get him to come along hopefully he shows up to this uh, bike and bird group ride that I'm heading to but uh, one thing he kind of had a question on he hasn't really ridden in groups right so he wasn't quite too familiar with formation riding and uh, you know some of the different nuances and, and probably the hand signals and things of that nature. So I thought it would be a good opportunity just to kind of on my way over there to uh, you know just talk through some of the basics, some of the things I've learned uh, with group riding. So first and foremost, I mean usually when you do a group ride it's in a staggered formation which means you have a bike kind of in you know one part of the lane and then directly ahead of you caddy quarter off in this direction you have uh, another bike and then of course it staggers over to the, the right and then the left and the right and the left that way is if you need to move side to side you technically can't can without hitting a bike next to you uh, you hardly ever see it unless it's a parade or something of that nature where the bikes are actually staggered side by side so anyway so you, you have a staggered formation and what you want is you have say I'm on the left side of the lane and you can see I have the yellow line on this side and I, in my mind I have an imaginary line that's dividing this lane in half so I have between the yellow I have between the yellow line and this imaginary center line that I can maneuver right so I, I have all of this like right here so the person over there would have all that lane so the first thing you, you got to practice is when you you know because one thing he kind of mentioned was he's kind of all over the lane right one thing you should start practicing is like picking, pit yourself in this imaginary mini lane within the lane and staying there. I mean, once you get pretty decent with riding, you know, you should be able to follow this, this yellow line like I'm doing right now in turns and whatever and maintain your distance. Maintain your distance from the line. Maintain your distance from the line, but even in a turn. So when you practice in a turn, you got to practice maintaining a line. So that's typically what I do is, you know, I've been riding for years, a little bit more of an advanced rider. But so when I go, and I, even when if I'm doing the twisties and I'm not doing them extremely fast, where I have to use the whole lane, I'll, I'll try to stay in formation. I'll try to keep my same line through all the turns. To me, it's just, it's just another way of like honing your skills and perfecting all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, so back to, so first you've got to maintain, you know, where you're at in the lane. And also this distance, right? That varies depending on how tight the formation is. Sometimes it's pretty much ride your own ride. So if I want to be way far back, say this car ahead of me is actually a bike. You know, I could, I could stay as far back as I feel comfortable. Of course, if I'm behind you, I'm going to get ticked because you've got this huge gap. I just don't like gaps. But uh, you want to make it to where if that person reacts or goes down or anything happens, that you have enough time to react. I mean, it's just basic driving riding 101 you need to have that uh, that reaction gap so I know sometimes I've gone on rides where it's pretty close you, you probably have maybe a car length between you and the bike ahead directly ahead of you on your side of the lane uh, but it all depends on how you know skilled the riders are and, and how much you trust them and how many times you've ridden with them typically if you're gonna be riding with a new group I would probably give yourself a little bit of, a little bit of room so that way you don't you know, in case something goes down, you know, people go down or, you know, with some inexperienced riders, it gives you just more time to react, a little bit more of a comfort zone. Okay, now the other thing you got to deal with is uh, when you do group rides is hand signals. A couple of the more common hand signals would be like, uh, so you'll see this or sometimes this, this will be two up, which means it's staggered formation. So that means the bike should be staggered. 
usually when you get to the twisties, and these commands are always coming from your road captain. So the person ahead of the pack is the road captain or the kind of the leader of the group ride. The person in the very back is called the sweep, right? They're kind of if somebody falls out, goes down, breaks down, they're the ones kind of that's supposed to pick them up. So the road captain will, will give the commands, and if you see the person in front of you give the command, you pick the command up and you pass it on back. So some of the more common ones, like I said, so you have two up, which means you have that staggered formation. If you're hitting twisties or someplace where the road gets tight, you'll do one. This is directly above your head. So you'll do one, and that's going to be um, single file. So you have the same distance that you had before, but it's going to be single file. And then at that point, you can use the entire lane to maneuver. Uh, another um, command you'll see, sometimes you'll see put the arms down like uh, whichever arm is available and that kind of means a slow down or the, you know there's reduced speed like the speed limits drop in so you kind of give like the, the slow down signal you're not signaling something else no you're signaling slowing down uh, the other one is your basic uh, right turn left turn right so if you if the road captain's coming up and he wants to make a right you know you obviously do the right signal or you do out to the left for the left signal so those are just some of the basic commands. There's a few more um, universal sign. Usually if you tap the top of your head, uh, that means a popo's coming up, police. I mean, I don't know if people can do that too. The uh, whoop-dee-doo, Basil. Whoop-dee-doo, what does it all mean, Basil? No, but you'll do the uh, tap on your head. That means uh, like police lights. That means popo's coming up. Uh, and there's a few more. I'm sure I'm, miss, I'm missing, I'm, there's a, a myriad, but those are the, the basics. But the main thing you gotta do is, like I said, ride your own ride. Don't feel like you have to keep up to the person ahead of you. I mean, you guys can hit the twisties, go single file, haul it through the twisties, and if you think that you gotta maintain that gap between you and the person ahead of you, and you're an experienced rider, you will go down. And I've seen it happen. I've been on rides where it's happened. So, yeah, don't, don't be trying to do all that, like I said. So if you hit the twisties, ride your own ride, slow down a little bit, and you have a good time. So, I hope this uh, helps if you guys are ever looking forward to doing a group ride. Uh, I think they're fun. Uh, it's, it's always enjoyable to go out and meet new people and, uh, you know, kind of go out in groups. We've got plenty to talk to. Obviously, you have the common commonality of motorcycles you can always uh, discuss, uh, not to mention other things. So, anyways, this is Boy with Iron Cross Racing. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and press that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and press that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell notification as I release a video at least once a week. Anyways, folks, have a great weekend. Get out there and ride. Be safe. And I'll talk to you later. Peace.